Here we are. I don't know if it was fireworks or gunshots, but the bird is in the air. She just let me know what a show no fit. It ain't safe out here, but she still gonna hold on. Hey guys, what's up? It's Tahira and welcome back to another video and we are doing a very, 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 very exciting vlog as you can tell from the title. This is my Sky Beyond the Storm reading vlog. If the quality may switch up in this video, it's because I'm planning to buy a Canon G7X Mark II for um, Black Friday. We are leveling up the content. I'm so excited. Ooh. It was only yesterday when I was crying over Rebred the Games. It's been like, what, a year? Like, I didn't, I, I'm so excited. Oh, I didn't explain. Penguin Teen, who is the publisher for the Ember and the Ashes series, they hit me up and they were like, we got early copies of Sky and we'd love to have you be a part of our promotion for it. I was like, are you joking? Of course. And it just happens that me and Mika and Jocelyn are all doing it again. And I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much Penguin Teen for sending me a copy of Sky Beyond the Storm. This video isn't sponsored by Penguin Teen, but they are sponsoring a Instagram post that is going up pretty soon. I'm gonna do an eyeshadow look based off of the book and I'll show, I'll put that on the screen here. Let's unbox it. Let me try not to show my address. Also, don't ask me why I have a whole ass hunting knife. This is my stepmom's knife. Okay. So I'm literally gonna cry. I feel it. I didn't even open it yet. I'm literally going to cry. Okay, okay. This me know. It has bubble wrap and everything. I'm screaming. Penguin was like, I'm not playing with y'all. Okay. This is so embarrassing. Like, what's going on here? I am holding A Sky Beyond the Storm by Sabah Tahir, the final installment in one of my favorite, favorite series ever. After like five years, if you haven't watched my Reaper of the Gates vlog, I will link that up here and also down below. Let me start crying, child. I look a mess. It's so pretty. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And I'm in the Asha series is like uh, the first, I think like YA series, YA fantasy series that I read by a Muslim author. And I just fell so, so in love with it. It just means the world to me, the characters, the world, the writing, like who writes as well as Sabah Tahir? Oh, I thought so. Okay, I literally can't believe that I'm holding this. Next time you guys see me, it'll be either before or after I shoot my pictures from my Instagram post, which is obviously going to be out by the time you see this video. So make sure you go back and like it and give it love. Also give love to all my Instagram posts at Sincerely Tahir. Yeah, my Instagram is a good time. Good morning, you guys. It is 11.23. I just got the newsletter from Fairy Loot that these are now available. Like, are you kidding? I have always loved the UK editions, which this is what they are. And then they have the sprayed edges and they have like a design on the edges. And I signed up for Fairy Loot so fast, child. I'm not playing with them, okay? It's 85 pounds. I think that's $113. And I'm like, girl, treat myself. Uh, I deserve it. And this is like one of my favorite series. Done. My order has been made. So I had to get the unsigned one because the signed one was already sold out. But I'm like, girl, it's okay, so well. Like, she's, I have her signature on my first editions of Ember in the Ashes. And I feel like given how, how beautiful those books are, it was way more important for me to have the books than for them to be signed, if I'm being honest.
hello reaper vlog i haven't updated y'all in a minute and the sun is directly in my eye here's what i get for trying to be cute i actually haven't started reaper yet it's like january 11th i've been really busy with like creating content and stuff so i'm definitely going to be reading the book obviously it's like literally my most anticipated book release of like last year so i'm gonna read it but actually i think it's better that i'm reading it at the end of the month because then when i do the live show it'll be super fresh in my head and because i love this series so much i know i'm gonna like finish it in a day or two so yeah today i'm gonna go shoot some content with my girl shay Matt. if you don't know who shay Matt is her instagram is shay Matt is my in unless i'm crazy this is my first look at this nike tracksuit that i've had for literally like two months but i've never worn it in a picture even though i've worn it all the time so i'm like okay i need to take a picture in it um we're gonna try to do three looks i love that she has a car because we could change in the back of the car or at least we can have our stuff in the car when i be shooting literally i'm changing in starbucks in restaurants and i'm lugging around these huge bags so at least we'll have a car alhamdulillah for that it's just this jumpsuit um the pants are wide leg which i love and i'm gonna be wearing it with ankle boots the sweater like the whole set is super big but i ordered it large i have it tied up in the back here and yeah it's also extremely long I'm wearing it with these ankle boots from asos i'm still trying to figure out how to work this vlog camera the other outfits are all like neutral with like a little hint of black i tried a new lip combo today i have on the juvia's place liner in cola and then the actual lipstick is in the shade in vogue that is what i have in the middle and this is their velvety matte lipstick very cute you love to see it i'm actually packing my bag um this huge ass duffel bag which i guess is for content purposes i got it as my modeling bag for when i go back and forth in the city but it's actually pretty great for content too so yeah i guess my shooting bag i have been blasting jasmine sullivan's new album hotels listen all of her songs that she's put out this year i was eating it up and i've i've been saying this literally my entire life that people have slept on jasmine sullivan and it's so disrespectful and so she came out with this album and chose violence okay the album is everything i decided i'm gonna wear my telfizi love my telfar bags if you don't know telfar is a black owned um luxury designer store and i don't do a lot of luxury things but these are still affordable i forgot the prices girl but i think i spent in total 400 it's an early birthday gift to me and it came just in time so yeah, i think i'm gonna rock my telfizi with this fit even though this and my scarf are different shades of nude i feel like is it a problem not really is she here I was like, oh, where's she at? Mind you, you're waiting for me. Yeah. Outside my house. <laughs> Love that. If y'all don't know who Shay Matt is, what Hello. are you doing? Hello. Like. Per. <laughs> me and Shay Matt are um, yeah. out to shoot. We walked up into some soul spot. The way it looks, people are like, oh, that's all. Yeah, they Maybe like soul there, food. Like black people up in there. And then there was a black guy coming out. So I'm like, okay, we walk in. Nobody's black. Nobody's black. Not one. I'm like, oh no, no, no. We're about to get some Jamaican food. Her. Glad well, we on the same page, <laughs> sis. Listen, if you don't know how to drive, you can't come. Oh, you don't know how to drive. I like, no, it's not. <laughs> this is what happens when you live in New York. The continuous drag. Anything else? <laughs> Anything else while we're here. So, y'all, we ended up not being able to get enough sunlight to do the real. Okay. Now we're chasing the sun very slowly because our feet hurt. For real. It's cold now. I feel like the sun kind of bamboozled us. Boom. We're going to try to set up, get some more shots. Picked up Concrete Rose, which I think I'm going to buy. This is the prequel to The Hate You Give. This is about um, Star's dad. And I'm super excited about this book. It's in my most anticipated releases of the year. They also have Conjuring of Light. Apparently they love V.E. Schwab. But I'm trying to find out the order of the Avatar comics because they continue right where the show leaves off. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to know what the hell happened. So here I am Googling it. Look at me putting her on. I am literally all for it. I'm about to read this. Yeah, I think you'll like tonight. it. Oh, girl. Why are you getting every book on a discount? Here I am not I'm getting so discounted so stuff. Huh? We was trying to get Bridgerton, y'all. Insert the clip somewhere on the screen. The only thing that I'm saying, she didn't say it was XOXO. I was For like, that's a girl. Straight thug. I, 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 
but was that really then we go all the way up to the front to ask them about bridgerton and they said everybody done bought this white lady book all the books is gone off the shelf they said they haven't reprinted the books in mad long it's back in printing so they're waiting to get more copies they can't even order anymore y'all really had to come do this i wanted to read about the duke and i that's just disrespectful now i gotta find it somewhere on the internet look what y'all made me do <laughs> honestly i don't even really want to read book one give me book two i need to know what happens after no, 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 that was all Shonda Rhimes that wanted to change it, but the author, mm -hmm. she was like, oh, I don't care. Yeah. But, yeah, they all white. He's gonna be black in my mind. Okay. That's it. Oh, wait, I found the teen section. Hold on. <laughs> Look at my favorite author. This is my favorite white lady. Miss Cassandra Clare down there. Love her. This is my series. I love the House of Nice series. My DRP gang gang. We support her. Any chance we get? Always. I used to avoid the hands. Oh, <laughs> Good morning, y'all. It's actually the afternoon, but finally starting Reaper today. Aren't y'all excited? I have a interview today with Black Muslim TV. We're gonna talk about modest fashion, which I'm super excited about. It's at 2 p.m., which is in like an hour or two. So um, right now, I'm just going to get some water and start editing my next video, which is my best and worst books of 2020 video. I have two videos already filmed, which I'm super excited for. I'm just in like a really good filming mood. So I'm sitting here already, and the interview starts at two, it's 1.50. So we're gonna squeeze in a couple pages of Sky. And I think I was subconsciously like, holding it off because i was scared but we we're we gonna do we're gonna start i think i'm only gonna read like literally i have 10 minutes i'm not gonna read like a whole chapter i'm scared <laughs> not me actually being nervous 10 minutes nine minutes let's read sky oh miss me now i'm only reading the blurb and they're like the soul catcher and i'm like Elias, yeah, baby. Oh my god. This is why people read with the dust jacket off because this is distracting. Huh. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. I literally can't believe I'm <laughs> even holding the book. Time to do this interview. I'll be back afterwards. Wish me luck. y'all today's january 12th tuesday and um i was supposed to get my hair done today because my birthday is in exactly a week which is very exciting i am on page 166 of sky beyond the storm and it is no surprise that i got to a third of the book in like one day of reading it and i know that i'm literally going to finish it next time i pick it up so i'm trying to be very smart about this i have been annotating a little bit and elias and helene are talking to each other and he's just like oh what did you say blood strike and she's like oh you know what soul catcher and i'm like if y'all don't stop the nonsense please like it's very annoying but then when laya calls him soul catcher i'm like she's mad you know when girls call you by your name it's a problem and it's just so funny because in the midst of all this serious stuff going on in the book it's very much still like Attention. we love to see it i have been getting a lot more packages for stuff for my birthday um i actually have to start packing soon because i know that i tend to forget things but i got this really exciting package from simon teen which i'm gonna show you guys in a second so i got this box for wings of ebony and i actually did not know that it was gonna come but i am still super happy that i got it because the book just looks so good y'all know i live for black girls i live for the black girl magic and from what i've read it's someone about a black girl from the hood in Houston who is surrounded by you know like crime and so many black people black kids are being forced into situations where they are you know in the streets and x y and z and so she finds out that she is like I think half goddess and she's like all these all these magic powers from her ancestors and she uses that to try to help her community and this is the box and on the top it says my hood is my home not my prison the springboard to my future you see pro poverty i see promise my story makes me strong resilient unshakable i'm a force to be reckoned with a mountain that won't be moved period period and this is the book i just actually unboxed it on my instagram but i wanted to come show y'all as well um i also love that the boxes are a lot smaller sometimes the boxes that they give for like pr and stuff they're just so wasteful so i like that this cute little box there's this print which i think is so pretty the detail and the artwork is actually stunning and then a letter from the author which i'm going to read a little later and here is the book 
isn't it stunning underneath the dust jacket it has these actual like wings and then you see just like wings of ebony on the side it's so pretty actually i really love these colors for those who don't know these are like my favorite colors to do makeup with so i might do a whole look inspired by this i also just ordered some gold eyeliner for my birthday so you might see a look at me and this is signed Hi y'all, so it is Monday, January 18th, uh, the day before my birthday, and I'm actually about to head out to New York where I'm gonna be spending my birthday. I am reading Sky Beyond the Storm and I literally have like 20% left and I think we're getting to like the scene with Laya and Elias. And I just don't know if I wanna bring the book with me because it's heavy and I'm almost finished with it. So I'm gonna see if I can find like uh, an ebook and like buy that because I already have a lot of stuff but I do still want to finish the story I like first of all I've been tabbing it non-stop I'm just super conflicted I'm like do I want to bring this with me when I'm so close to finishing yeah I think I'm just gonna try and find a ebook and download that on my phone but yeah I am super excited to be going to New York y'all know it is like my favorite city in the world and I feel like no better place to spend my birthday and to just really get a break, refresh, just chill out. And so this is probably my last clip that I'm doing for my Reaper vlog, unless I actually like read the book and finish it and I'll show you guys my reaction, but then it's gonna be my birthday vlog. So stay tuned. It is the day after my birthday. I'm also filming my birthday vlog. Me and my friends were, were up early, so I'm going to finish A Sky Beyond the Storm. I'm gonna finish it now while we're laying here, but this is our morning view, you know? In it, in it, in it. You know, it's a, it's a moment. I don't think I'll ever get over this. But yeah, so hopefully I finish right here so you can just see my reaction because not that I'm tired of reading the book, but I'm so close to the end, I just need to finish. But um, the author just killed somebody that I did not expect her to kill. I'm actually surprised about this one. So I hope you guys liked watching me read A Sky Beyond the Storm in real time. Now it's time to get into the review part of this video. If you haven't watched my reading vlogs before, what I typically like to do is like show my reading experience in the beginning and then like the last half. I actually get into the review aspect so I can kind of finalize my thoughts, share my ratings, what I liked, what I didn't like, things like that. If you like my makeup look, it will be coming very soon to my Instagram. I did film it, so. Don't worry, I got y'all. Let's get into A Sky Beyond the Storm, the last book in the Ember Quartet series. As you guys saw in the vlog, I was very nervous to even like read the book. I've had it for maybe like a month now. This series is something I've been like super emotionally invested into. It's one of my favorite series ever. It's the first YA book that I read by a Muslim author, um, YA fantasy book, and it just impacted me so much. And I feel like I've been on this journey for a really long time. So for the fact that the series is over is very hard for me to wrap my head around. Let's just get into 
some of my feelings. I'm gonna try not to make this super spoiler because I know that some people like may not have read the book. In Sky Beyond the Storm, we are left with Elias, who is now the soul catcher, um, and his journey is to like guide the ghosts and the afterlife, specifically the ghosts that were deeply troubled by something. To do this, he had to kind of let go of all his human ties, but he also had to let go of any pain or resentment that he has for himself for being a marshal and killing all of those people. And essentially, I don't know how else to describe it other than mouth or moth which made Elias into the soul catcher he basically like drugs him like really like Elias is a drug addict <laughs> in this book whenever he's like overwhelmed with these feelings mouth just comes in and like numbs him but what's going on in this book is the ghosts are just not there he's sitting there in the forest with the same ghost that's been there for a while. But there's an entire war going on with the Nightbringer, the Jinns, and Karis versus like Helene and the Scholars. It's a, it's literally an entire ass world war outside of the forest and there are no souls to pass over. He's like, that's not my responsibility. That's not my business. I'm the soul catcher. And Laia essentially is like, bro, there's no souls to catch. What are you catching? There's no spirits here. The forest is dead. You haven't seen a new ghost in like two weeks. There's clearly something wrong here, but he's so drugged up and so like in denial. Laia has mad beef with the Nightbringer. Like literally every time she hears this man's name, she'll see a sneak peek of his cloak like flying somewhere and she's ready to square up. Like, Nuck if you buck, like she's really ready to swing on him at any moment to the point where she really does some stupid things, some very stupid things. She's also dealing with that as well as the emotional turmoil of Elias essentially becoming the soul catcher to save her brother. And because of that, she lost him as a partner. So Laia being on the search for the Nightbringer and Elias trying to figure out where the souls are, they kind of have to team up and work together. And there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of feelings in the air. Elias is like, don't call me Elias. I'm the soul catcher. And she's like, yo mama named you Elias and that's what I'm finna call you, period. The Nightbringer is literally just trying to destroy everything. He's overwhelmed with so much grief um, and pain by what has been done against his people that he's not even just trying to give revenge on the scholars, but literally everybody. He literally is just like, we have to end the world and start the world anew. The Nightbringer thinks he's Thanos. Very that energy. Now that we're reacquainted with the plots of the book. Let's get into some tea. A lot of people died. I was expecting it. We knew it was gonna happen because certain authors, you know they just like enjoy to torture their reader. Sabata here is just one of them. Like she just likes us to suffer and she's made it very clear and it's fine. Like, mashallah. There were a lot of deaths. And even though you know it's a war, you know people are fighting, that spirit of people dying every other page carries throughout the entire series and Sky Beyond the Storm is no exception. I had about like five people that I was prepared to die. Um, I knew the main three wouldn't die. Like Helene, Elias, and Lyra were not gonna die. I just knew that. There were so many options of people to die, but the fact that I was right I'm not gonna say how many times I was right or which people I was right, but the fact that I was right about certain people dying, I was not pleasantly surprised. I didn't wanna be <laughs> right. One person definitely suffered more loss than the other two from our main three, and that's Helene. She lost her entire family in Reaper. And as we go into this book, she literally just loses more and more and more and more people. And that was really heartbreaking to see. Now, I don't stand Helene. I would never stand a colonizer, but I definitely can understand her mindset because this was how she she was raised as a child and she was indoctrinated into thinking that everybody else was below her. I grew more respect for her in Reaper as she kind of got out of the system and kind of started thinking on her own, but I would never stand a colonizer. The fact that I saw people leaving reviews talking about Sabata here did Helene dirty and that's my favorite character and that's why I'm reading the book two stars. You stand a colonizer and you say it proudly like, no, never. The math of you losing a lot of people compared to what your people have done, like I feel like you could actually lose a couple more if I'm being honest. Helene ain't got nobody. Nobody but her sins of colonizer. Damn. Even though our main three didn't die, I have to say, Sabah definitely tried to kill all three of them at one point in the story. Now I do wish that their potential deaths were not as metaphoric and as gory as other parts in the book. Now I'm not saying that I want 
like Laya and Elias and Helene to be like tortured or like lose a limb or something like that. But I'm just saying to the essence of the book, since literally people die in the harshest, most grotesque ways since the first book, you would think that one of them would have like lost a finger, you know? Wait, not me editing this clip and trying to figure out why do I keep thinking that somebody lost an arm or a hand in the middle of war? I'm realizing that I was watching Baruto and Naruto definitely lost a hand in the Great Ninja War and that's what I'm thinking about, not Elias. I'm so sorry. They have a few scars and cuts and bruises, but I wanted to see people like really suffer. If you're not gonna kill our main three, you need to get us pretty damn close emotionally. Another thing that happened in this book where there were definitely people that came back to life and I just feel like if we're gonna have people come back to life I need more of an explanation behind it granted I'm very much aware that this is war right but if we're gonna have people pop up from nowhere it doesn't matter that this is in the middle of a war this is a whole entire human or people that were dead or presumed to be dead that are now just standing in front of you like that deserves an explanation I don't care what's happening so now we're gonna get into each individual character starting with Helene because I care the least about her as I mentioned before a lot of Helene's point of view is largely based around the fact that she is the commander and um, the blood strikes still and basically the only person ruling the entire empire. Now if you watch my Reaper at the Gates vlog you know that the political intrigue was my favorite aspect of that book. I just loved the cat and mouse game between Karis and Helene and just seeing them strategize and trick each other which in turn tricked us as an audience because we never knew what was going to happen. I loved that energy. I just wasn't super impressed with her point of view in this book because I like political entry. Time for politics is gone like we fighting now. So I understood logically most of the action scenes were in Helene's point of view and like her fighting the Karkins and all of that. So I appreciated it. I saw the effort but I still just don't care about Helene's. The only thing, the only thing that I liked about Helene's point of view was her and Harper were having those moments. Like literally there were moments when Musa was like, yo like Harper's about to pull up and she was like, <laughs> those were my favorite moments because you just got to see another side of Helene. I love Harper. And do I love Harper because Harper is somewhat connected to Elias? Yes. I saw reviews of people saying that like, you know, uh, Helene and Harper didn't get as much as a fleshed out love story as Elias and Laya. And I'm like, why are y'all here to stand the only white people in the story? I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't understand why it's so important for y'all. Y'all want her to get a soul tie like Elias and Laya written in the stars? Are you crazy? Please. In this book, you see Helene struggle with the fact that she really does love and care about Harper, but she's so scared to open up and be vulnerable. I feel like I related to that. She's went through a lot of trauma and hardship, and specifically people using her loved ones against her. And the last person that she loved was Elias. If there's one thing I feel like that is just super attractive, it is somebody that is like not scared to show how much they like they love and care about you and that like they want you. And I love that Harper was giving her all of that energy, whether she was in a place to give it back or not. My favorite moments of Helene is when she's not operating as a soldier. I loved her moments with Elias. I loved her moments with Maya. And I love that they have like a friendship. I'm not big on girl hate or girl beef, especially over a guy. I mean like Ilias, I understand, but still I hate that trope. I just feel like it's really unnecessary. So I loved seeing them have a friendship, but more than just a friendship to the point where Helene would like miss Laya and kind of, I feel like they kind of look at each other as like sisters. She'd be like, oh man, I wonder if Laya was here, what she would say or I wish she could give me advice or what would Laya do in those moments and I feel like that was just a super sweet side of Helene. Another addition to Helene's point of view that I feel like was really smart was Musa. After Elias he is my second favorite character. I love Musa and I love that he had much more of a present character arc in this book. I think Musa just adds so much life. Musa is a very Magnus type of character. Those are my favorite characters like they're like snarky and cute and like super cocky but they like ride or die for their people and they have like huge hearts. Musa was Magnus for me. Okay, next we are talking about Elias and Laya, but specifically Elias and Saif. The love of my life. I love this boy. Elias is like my whole heart. There are a few guys in books that I love and adore this much. The only other person I can really think about is Jace Herondale. But Elias is my tortured baby. Like I love him so much. Elias was definitely on Soul Catcher 
mode throughout the entire book and you can always tell the growth and progression of a character through their names and their point of views. For majority of this book, Helene's point of view is introduced as the blood strike because that's just who she has to be and Elias is referred to as a soul catcher in a lot of chapters until you see him as Elias again. And I love that um, Sabata here does that because Elias has such a distinct personality. He was like the tortured soul. He had like a pure heart and he knew deep down that what was going on in his life as a marshal was wrong and he just was trying to find a way out and then he got caught up in destiny and his pure heart led him to kind of sacrifice certain parts of his life for the sake of other people and i think that just speaks so much to his character and who he is as a person like he literally to rectify his sins as a marshal he gave up his freedom as a regular person and went to live as a soul catcher and also to save darren to help lyle who he loves like everything about Ilias is based in wanting to be a better person wanting to be better for the people around him and i just love that he's such a well-written character i know a lot of people relate a lot to lyle and weirdly some of y'all relate to Helene as well but I think that his character arc is just so well done I feel like it's just the one that I relate the most to Laya reminded me of Zaylee in Children of Virtue and Vengeance in Children of Virtue and Vengeance Zaylee was like F all y'all I don't care about nothing I don't care about the rules I don't care about what's going on F the war I have beef with a specific individual, Enon, and I'm gonna get his ass and that's that. And that's how Laya is in Sky Beyond the Storm. Laya was ready for all the smoke. Anytime she saw the light bringer, she was ready he could get it. Not only did he finesse her and get her to fall in love with him, he finessed her parents as well, which led to their death and then was working with the woman who killed them. Let's get into the Nightbringer. So, I always hated Keenan. I am somebody where I don't necessarily like love triangles. I actually hate them. How do I say this in a way that is halal? Let me... I am okay with love triangles and like tensions in a physical sense. Let's use these words. Then there's really nothing at stake. Physical attraction to somebody is really just natural, like that's fine. So love triangles, I don't like, but lust. Lust triangles, I'm fine with. I hated Keenan. Even in Torch, he was out of his depth. You can't touch Elias. Elias was unconscious, majority of Torch, and he's still that nigga. So it's funny when Laya refers to Keenan as like the first boy she ever loved. She says it a lot, and I'm like, girl, did you love him? Or were y'all trauma bonding? Oh, okay. I don't recall that being love, like, especially if he loved you for the sake of using you. That's not love, mommy. But the Nightbringer is literally the symbol of the moral ambiguity of the novel. As conflicted as people may feel about Helene and Laya and even Elias who have all committed murders, who've all done atrocious things, they still have good in them. And the Nightbringer is that to the umph teeth power. Like, can you imagine? all of your people just being locked away and imprisoned. I mean, that's not hard for a lot of us to imagine, you know, descendant of American slavery. That's what was so interesting about seeing the Nightbringer's origin story, because like his name is the Meharaya, which means um, beloved. And through his love of humanity, he was able to be used to then imprison his own people who he also loved. And I'm like, can you just imagine the pain and the suffering? We understand why Laya has beef with the marshals because of what they've done to the scholars. So Bob was like, let me throw y'all for another loop because the scholars who are now the victims imprisoned other people. I think it really plays into the theme of like war begets war. You can always find reasons to continue spreading the hurt and the trauma that you've felt. Even though I love Elias the most, I, I would have to argue that the Nightbringer's character is probably the most interesting. His story from beginning, the Nightbringer as the Meharaya, as the original Soul Catcher, like all of that to how he ended, it is truly mind blowing. Like there, I don't have a lot of words to express it, but girl, that just thinking about him as a character makes me want to go watch her, her writing class on Skillshare because I'm like, girl, how did you do that? Like, how did you make me empathize with him? And not only empathize with him, but to the point where there was certain stuff I literally agreed with. I was like, 
you're right. We also got to hear about his relationship with Mouth, which was really interesting because when you see the Nightbringer, he's like the essence of so much power and magic, but then Mouth is described as magic personified. And so it's it's just natural to assume that there's a connection between them, but actually learning about the connection was super interesting. I think the word I would use to describe the Nightbringer is that his story and his character arc was just like devastatingly beautiful. The last character they're going to touch on is Karis, um, the Commandant, and we finally learn about like her complete origin story. We heard bits and pieces about how she got so ruthless because of how Elias's father died, a little bit about how she felt like her father picked Elias over her, and we finally got the whole picture and I'm not impressed because Karis is another colonizer. Hearing that the reason she's so aggressive and so brutal and gruesome and just like a terrible person is because her mom was killed by scholars by scholar rebellions they wouldn't have needed to rebel if y'all didn't oppress them so like men I care it's like when you hear white people talk about their struggle and then you hear black people talk about their struggles and you're just like okay not that trauma is a competition but sometimes it's just that's what you was mad about and you your people did this to me and I'm supposed to empathize with you it's like okay that's great. Like, please go boohoo cry in the corner. We don't care. And that's really how I felt about her. I do like how Sabata here kind of interconnected all of her characters. Laya and Elias and Helene are connected. Laya is connected to the Nightbringer. And then Karis is connect connected to the Nightbringer. Karis is also connected to Elias and Helene. But Karis and the Nightbringer, they're like teaming up made a lot of sense because the Nightbringer wanted to destroy everything. And Karis was so angry and hurt that she didn't care about what was destroyed she just wanted to enact that same anger that she had in her to other people into the world and they both were just willing to sacrifice everything to deal with their own pain and suffering and i think that suffering is what attracted them to each other and i think it just played really well into all of the other themes in the stories and the interconnectedness of all the characters but that fight scene at the end which you know who i was here for it somebody called sabata here Actually, let me not write Penguin Tina email because I have a few ideas. I feel like Sabata here should do a little novella about Musa and the princess that he was with and also throw in Janun is in there about like his life in the marine capital. And then I wanna hear about the beef between Karis and Mira. Girl, that's a good spinoff. So let's get into my final thoughts and my overall rating of a Sky Beyond the Storm. I would say that I'm rating this book a four out of five stars. I still deeply enjoyed it and I feel like it was a good conclusion to this series. I was super satisfied with the ending and I honestly had no idea like how Elias was gonna get out of the whole soul catcher thing. I literally felt like Reaper was an ending on its own. So the fact that Sabata here found a way to wrap this thing up, I was very pleased and very happy with it. You guys know that I feel very weird about calling it a fantasy series and if I'm being honest, I feel like it was just one big love Love story between Laya and Elias and I was okay with that. It showed of all the things they had to go through to get to meet each other, to deal with their love, falling in love, and how to keep their love and how to get back to each other. But yeah, I can't believe it's done. Like, I've been reading this series since I was in high school. It just means so much to me and I will forever cherish it and read it over and over and over again for the rest of my life. Thank you guys for watching my reading vlog. Comment down below what your rating of A Sky Beyond the Storm was. If you guys watch watched our live stream, which is actually gonna be tomorrow, about A Sky Beyond the Storm, comment down below. And our next book for the Icar Trials is going to be We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal, which I'm so excited about. So make sure you go get your copies and stay tuned for the announcement date. All information surrounding the Icar Trials will be on our Twitter page at The Icar Trials. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me everywhere at Sincerely Tahiri, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!